So our first one was in 2011. It was for a child suffering from Fanconi anemia, okay. which is a rare blood disorder. We took the stem cells from his baby sister. And there was a match six out of six from the HLA typing test that I told you about. Wow. Uh, the transplantation took place in Hussein Cancer Center in Jordan. And the baby, the, the child is fully healthy. He's now 22 years old. He's living a normal life. Wow, unbelievable. So okay. it is an application. It's not something that, you know, that is fiction. Mm-hmm. All right, Ahmed Al Ahmed, founder and CEO of Future Health Biobank GCC, joins me in the studio today. Ahmed, how are you? Good. How about you? Thank you for having me. Yeah. No. Thank you for joining us. Um, today's topic is. Um, it's unusual for me, I have to say. I've never discussed it with anyone. <laughs> it's too new for everyone, I must say. <laughs> exactly. And to be honest, before we dive into the details and, and everything that has to do with stem cell therapy, stem cell research, um, and uh, stem cell storage and donation, I want you to explain what a stem cell is to the day-to-day listener, you know, because I think I would want to know a bit more as well myself. Think of it in a way is the basic building block of life. Okay. So everything in your body is created from these cells. Okay. Organs, blood, eyes, all in all, it's the basic foundation of the human body. Okay. So the excessive that's not been used in creating you as a baby goes through the umbilical cord and the placenta. Mm -hmm. And there goes the story of biobanking. That's okay. why we store these cells, basically. Okay. And, um, you know, you mentioned uh, it's in the umbilical cord and in the placenta, which means that it needs to be taken out of the embryo, essentially, or the when the fetus is still in the womb, basically, or can it be done post-birth? So it's usually done right after the delivery. Okay. So you have a collection kit with you within inside the labor and delivery. Okay. And then the trained physician will collect the placenta, the tissue, the blood. Okay. We'll place it in a kit. This kit gets shipped to our facilities, processed and stored. That's how it goes in a simple uh, manner. Fantastic. I think that was a misconception. I thought it was done, you know, when the woman was pregnant, you know, um, extracted during her pregnancy, which would pose a risk. Is that something that's being done or uh, no, No, it's absolutely not? It's a non-invasive procedure. So it's uh, there's no harm on the mother or the baby. Okay. Basically, the placenta gets uh, detached from mm-hmm. the baby, mm-hmm. put on a side, and then the collection will take place. So it's a pure... Not, we get that question a lot. Yeah. As, uh, would this harm my baby? Would this har-? No, it's totally non-invasive. Mm-hmm. And it's done in a safely manner. It would take five minutes for the collection. Right. Um, and after the birth, so there's no risk, you know, no, of absolutely. anything. Perfect. Okay. And can this sample or this uh, th- these stem cells, can they be used on anyone or is it just the person that it's been collected from? Brilliant. Is it like blunt donation? Because I mean, it's a simple question, but yeah. Brilliant question. So basically, it's uh, biological insurance okay. for the baby and the family. Uh, it can be used for the baby 100% without a need for any testing mm-hmm. or any matching testing. Mm-hmm. For the family, we would do an HLA typing test. It's a kind of a matching test to see if it's compatible with the siblings or the mother or the father. Okay. Uh, Over our 20 years of experience in this domain, we've seen that there's a high compatibility between siblings and parents. Mm -hmm. So yes, it can be used for the family. It's not only for the child. Okay, but uh, apart from that, cannot be shared. Like it can't be shared with someone outside of the family. It could. Okay. uh, Just as long there's an HLA typing test. Okay. So it can be used. Now, uh, to dive into it, we have different type of stem cells that we take. I was just going to ask. So (laughs) one of them is what we call hematopoietic stem cells. Uh, To make it simple, the stem cells from the blood, uh, which is basically treating blood disorders Mm -hmm. like Fanconi anemia, thalassemia, leukemia. All of these have been FDA approved. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's been in treatment for the past 36 years. Wow. So it's no longer something that's under clinical trials and so Mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Uh, The second type is what we call mesenchymal stem cells, which is a tissue-based stem cells that we take from the core tissue or from the placenta. Okay. Now, the beauty of these is 
you don't need any matching tests to use them. Mm-hmm. So I can take my babies and you can use them. Okay. Um, um, now, what are they in application for? They're still in the early stages, so they're under clinical trials for diseases like cerebral palsy, MS, okay. uh, autism, but you are seeing progress with the patient's cases. Okay. So it's currently being treated uh, internationally, even in UE. Mm-hmm. So there are clinical trials that are going on in UE with regards to the treatment using mesenchymal stem cells. Okay. So it is upcoming, it is new, but you're seeing a huge demand on it nowadays. Okay, so those are the two types. Are there more or is it just those main two basically? These are the main two. Okay. Uh, now you have different sources that we can extract in our lab from mm-hmm. these cells. One of them is called amniotic membrane, mm-hmm. which is basically being used in wound healing since 1910. Wow. So okay. it's 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 an old technology, mm. but it just came through to our region. Okay. Uh, so the amniotic membrane is basically extracted from the placenta itself. Mm-hmm. It's the outer layer of the placenta, and it can be used for skin healing, wound healing, too many applications that it can be used on. Okay. The second, which is the most exciting, uh, because yes, um, stem cells awareness have gone down mm. now. But uh, there's a new technology which is called exosome. Okay. Okay. It's exosome banking. Basically, we take part of these non-vascular cells, which are called exosome, from the blood. Mm-hmm. It's being used in therapy for um, and for cosmetic purposes in women. Mm. So we're seeing a huge demand on this now. While uh, mummies would say, "Okay, I'm storing my placenta." Mm. Might as well use that bit, which is the exosome, Mm -hmm. for uh, skin rejuvenation, uh, organ rejuvenation, IV drips, uh, for hair loss. So, yes, it is in action. Fantastic. Wow. That's the newest science. So the science is going towards this direction now. And it's still under clinical trials. Like, is it something that's fairly new that it hasn't been approved yet? Or is it? It's it's fairly new, Mm -hmm. but... It is an application okay. already. Okay. Um, U.S., U.K., U.E. itself. So we get a, we're getting a lot of inquiries where patients are saying, "Okay, we know about stem cells. We mm. know about placenta. What's exosome? I've heard from clinics that I can use it with a derma pen for my face." Wow. Yeah. Amazing. And these core blood exosome are a bit different than what you find in the market because exosome has been around in the market for a few years. But that's plant exosome. Uh, human blood exosome has a total different applications and results. Okay. So you actually do see results in your skin very fast. Okay. Okay. I want to take a step back before we dive into everything. I want to take a step back. What got you into all of this? Was there like a personal experience, or because a lot of people start their path with you know uh, uh, certain treatments or, or or areas of study based on like a personal experience or an inspiration? What? How did? How did that? happen with you <laughs> now to be honest i'm away from this domain in terms okay. of studies okay so i've studied uh, business i've done my master's in risk management okay and i came across the idea when i was doing my master's in nottingham university of nottingham okay and stem cells is well established in the uk and that's where we started the first bank in the uk okay and then moved across to a second facility in switzerland okay then we've acquired the bank in the states and we've recently opened the largest GMP facility in UAE. So I started by right. doing my master's and hearing stem cells. What's the application of stem cells? This is, this is back in 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, we thought, let's dive into this. Mm. It's new to the region all in all, especially yeah. in UAE. Yeah. So in UAE previously, you had a lot of companies that would ship kits across to their facilities in UK and Switzerland a new cabinet resolution came out that Mm. uh, the country wants everything stored within, inside of Dubai. So that's when we said it's about time to launch and build 
a full-fledged facility similar to what we have in the UK. Right. So it was an opportunity that was untapped at the time, and you felt like you might as well exactly. grab it. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. <laughs> um, okay. So going into uh, stem cell therapy and, and treatment, you mentioned that it is used for a lot of uh, uh, blood diseases, so thalassemia. Um, um, Fancuri anemia. Th- yeah. I mean, blood cancers. Blood cancers, exactly. Yeah. Um, are there any diseases that it can't treat? Like, are there certain categories that it wouldn't be able to treat? Uh, blood disorders, you can say 100%. Okay. So all kind of blood disorders, um, majorly focused on cancers and thalassemia. Okay. Fancuni anemia, beta thalassemia. Mm-hmm. Uh, tissue related, it's still, as we said, it's under clinical trials. Okay. But you do have a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, football players nowadays mm-hmm that are being treated using stem cells for ortho cases. For example, Luis Suarez was treated for a knee cup injury using stem cells. Oh. So it is an application. Uh, the sky is the limit, basically, okay. with, with using these cells. Okay. But you do need certain approvals for them to become fully approved. Right. So for today, mostly all of the blood disorders um, Body and skin rejuvenation is also an application. Anything beyond like diabetes, autism, Mm -hmm. cerebral palsy is still under clinical trials. You have a lot of governmental foundation that are going towards a diversion of regenerative medicine uses instead of operation. Mm -hmm. And that's where stem cells comes in play. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would your um, approach be to someone who's still skeptical when it comes to stem cell uh, stem cell uh, uh, you know donation or storage what would you tell them i mean in a simple language we we insure our cars our houses and companies for a fortune uh, how about if it's something related to the future of our babies that's fantastic. So it's an insurance for life basically yes, agreed. which you mentioned in the beginning actually. Yeah, yeah. agreed. And it became much more affordable than it used to be. Okay. So I was just going to mention the cost cuz a lot of people f- have found that, you know, storage and and paying for the storage is actually quite costly. So is it has that changed? Will it change as demand rises? How does it work? So it changed drastically since we started till today. Uh, packages starts off now almost 17,000 dirhams. You're talking for 20 years. Okay. And the patient can pay on 12 months installment. So wow. anyone basically can afford to do so. Okay. And it's a one-time payment that you do not pay for the next 20 years. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we've seen an, a huge increase in demand. We deal with about... 700 to 800 pregnant moms in Dubai alone per month. Wow, that's fantastic to hear, actually, because I was going to say, based on research, we've seen a decline in the number of people who are actually storing stem cells. And I was going to ask you, why do you think that's the case? Is it um, lack of education, lack of necessity? Why would you say that's the case? Now, there's a lot of lack in terms of education, and that's where we're focusing on nowadays. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a lot of events, seminars, Uh, We're participating in um, antenatal classes in hospitals to raise awareness about stem cells and so on. We're doing a lot of interviews as well to enhance, (laughs) you know, the patient's knowledge in terms of why should I store these stem cells? And one beautiful point that you've mentioned, a lot of mummies think that, yeah, it's going to harm the baby while collecting, while really it's a super non-invasive procedure mm-hmm. that has nothing to do with the baby. Mm-hmm. So in UAE, I would say no. There's a there's an increase on demand nowadays. Okay. In Across countries like the UK, the US, the market is consolidating nowadays. So mm-hmm. banks are acquiring each other. Basically, oh. big players are staying in the market. Okay. And that's why you say there is a drop in demand Mm -hmm. in our region it's highly uprising now okay okay and um in your opinion what's the forecast for the next few years do you think that it will keep rising um given that you continue to educate the public um and do you feel like um more and more people will be approaching you we're seeing that actually so we're seeing a demand increase year by year 
especially again if you want to talk about GCC and UAE mm-hmm. since it's something fairly new mm-hmm. um, it's becoming a trend between mummies nowadays yeah that okay you've stored your stem cells I want to store my baby stem cells and so mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. so we do see a demand and we do see future plans for <laughs> us as well uh, we're expanding more and more in the region Okay. All right. So there is a buzz created around something called Omisurge, I think, or something called Omisurge, right? Am I yeah. saying it right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, can you tell us what is it and, and why there's a buzz? Like, why is that therapy creating a buzz? Okay. Basically, back to the <laughs> your first question. There okay. are two types of stem cells that we said. Okay. Blood and tissue. Okay. So the tissue stem cells, we have the ability to duplicate these cells and grow them into 200 million, 300 million cells that you can reuse. Okay. The blood is what gets collected during delivery. This is what we take, and this is what we're able to store. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a company in the U.S. called Gimda, which is the one that you're referring to, was able to duplicate the blood for therapeutic use. Oh. This is the whole fuzz about it. Okay. So nowadays... FDA gave a clearance to that company mm-hmm. that they're able to duplicate these core blood, meaning one sample can actually create, can actually treat multiple patients with blood disorders, cancers, and so on. Oh. For that reason, one of the main reasons that we will see an increase in demand. It's right. no longer that I can use the core blood sample once. Mm-hmm. You can use it multiple times. And... As we said, FDA has cleared that out, mm-hmm. so it will be followed in the market sooner or later. Okay. It's Technically, it's an allogenic use of core blood samples. This is what it is. Okay, okay. Um, and can you maybe tell us like a more detailed uh, step-by-step process of how the storage actually happens? So you did tell us that they take it, like let's say from, from the placenta or or upon birth but then how does it work like do you have to transfer it to a facility is there a certain uh, environment that it needs to be stored in take us a bit more into details into how it's stored and and whether there's a risk of damage to these stem cells okay basically uh, I'll walk you through the whole process of what happens day to day with us here in Dubai so we get a call by patients where they're interested in stem cell storage right they either come to the lab. Um, our lab is in Dubai Healthcare City. Mm-hmm. They come in, they sit with a medical advisor who is specialized in stem cells mm-hmm. and can give the parent a free of charge session okay. in which they give them information, what's the uses of these cells, why should you bank and so on. If the patient agrees, they sign up a contract and then we handle them a collection kit, mm-hmm. which is designed by us. Okay. Uh, they take this kit to the hospital. Uh, we've trained all the staff across in all hospitals in UAE. Amazing. So collection is not an issue. Mm-hmm. Once you're, you're delivering the baby, the collection takes place, and then they would call up our messenger who would pick up the kit on 24-7 basis and deliver it to the lab. Now, the complicated part starts within the lab. Okay. To process these cells, you do need a clear, controlled environment in what we call clean rooms. Mm-hmm. So the moment this comes in, it gets um, checked in our receiving area, which is a clean room, and then gets passed to the next clean room, which they start processing the blood. Uh, processing the blood takes about four to six hours almost. Then they start processing the core tissue and the placenta, in a higher grade of a clean room, in which we call ISO-1 clean Mm -hmm. room. The entire process takes about 12 hours, and recruiting for this in UE is is tough. Yeah, it's too new. Yeah, Yeah. it's too new. Mm -hmm. So we had to bring our staff from the UK Mm -hmm. till, you know, till the local team was able to get the process all in all. Of course. Next thing, um, these cells will be, after they're separated, Uh, We do something called QC testing on it. Then we store them in a liquid nitrogen tank Mm -hmm. under a temperature of minus 196 degrees. Wow. Yeah, that's how the process takes place. Now, you do have to monitor everything inside the lab, Mm -hmm. especially in terms of temperature 
so we do have cloud monitoring system on each piece of equipment for the lab. Mm-hmm. And you need constant feeding of liquid nitrogen to the tanks to ensure that you're able to sustain these cells for the next 25, 30 years. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to ask, my next question was, is there like an expiration date for these uh, stem cells? Like, can they actually expire? Can they no longer be used? So the eldest stem cell sample was stored 34 years ago, to be specific, and they've been doing testing on that sample. Viability did not drop by 1%. Okay. Uh, We started with a 20-year contract and Mm -hmm. then moved to 25 then to 30 years. Uh, Latest articles say that the stem cells can live up to a human age, Mm -hmm. which is about 60 to 70 years. Okay. So there is no harm on keeping these cells for 60, 70, 80 years, as long as they're stored in an ideal condition. Right. This is the thing. So you cannot jeopardize how they're stored. Mm -hmm. Uh, You cannot jeopardize the connectivity of liquid nitrogen. Mm -hmm. So we have a bulk tank in Dubai Healthcare City that's outside the facility, Mm -hmm. constantly feeding the tanks that are inside. Right. To maintain that. Okay, I actually just thought of something as you were speaking, hypothetically speaking, if, you know, these cells were not properly stored, what what are the risks that it poses? Like, let's say it was not stored properly, but used later on, could that pose a risk on a person's health? And do we know that? Does like, do we have enough research on that? Or? We do. Now, um, the beauty of stem cells, whichever way a transplant goes, is uh, if your body rejects it, you'll only get fever. So it's not like the bone marrow. Okay. Uh, Now, what are the risks in terms of a transplant is the patient's success rate would definitely lower. Mm -hmm. So instead of achieving um, 90, 95%, it will go down to 30, 40%. Okay. That's the only risk. But either way, each hospital or transplant center that needs these cells, prior to infusing them in the patient, they ask for what we say a flow cytometry report okay. on the status and the viability of these cells. Right. So if they're non-viable or the hospital sees that they're not viable or the doctor, they will not ask for the cells. Okay. So this is it depends on the success rate of your internal processing. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question. Sorry, these just keep coming <laughs> because <laughs> this is such an interesting topic. But um, let's say I actually want to store, I, I'm an expecting mother and I want to store these stem cells. Can someone be, I mean, ineligible for these for for storing stem cells like is it something that is out there or anyone can store them no anyone can store them we do do testing for the mother okay so we take a maternal blood sample right just to screen if the mother is infected with any illnesses like let's say hepatitis right hiv god mm-hmm. forbid mm-hmm. if that's the case then we cannot store the sample other than that yes okay. we do that and in Dubai, given the fact that, you know, it's a fast city, a lot of people actually decide on storing last minute. Okay. So the second they're in delivery, they say, oh, okay, we want stem cells. Mm-hmm. And we do have kits across in all hospitals where the midwife would go pick up a kit. Amazing. Yeah. So then, even if I'm not planning for it, I can make the decision right then and there. Funny story, 80% of our business in UAE is last minute. Is based on that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, as is everything yeah. else in, yeah. in life. Okay, my last question. I know you're a very busy man no and you, have a, you run a business that is so important. Uh, what's your advice to people who are still worried, who still don't know enough? What would you tell them? Would you tell them, educate yourselves? Would you tell them, come visit, you know, our, our cord blood bank? Or would what what would you tell them to do? If I'm interested, but I'm still a little worried, like, what's your advice for the general public? To be honest, do your research. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, we can we can Google everything nowadays. Right. We can see the benefits. Right. Um, if you can afford it, which most people can in UE, mm-hmm. given the fact that it's it, it comes on an installment basis, mm-hmm. uh, do it. Uh, even if you don't have a history of illness in your family, you never know what the years might bring across. Mm-hmm. Uh, so definitely. Ask your doctors, ask your physicians, Mm -hmm. and when deciding on a core blood bank to go for, visit the labs, let them let you know about the standards, about their sample release, 
have they treated patients before using their inventory stem cells or not? Mm-hmm. Uh, us as a company, Future Health, we've had, so we have a lot of BBC News reportage about cases that we actually treated from siblings. Oh, amazing. Once you see that, you say, okay, no, it's actually being used. It's not something that I'm doing it for the sake of the trend. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that's you, that's my typical advice. Do you, do you have any cases worth mentioning? Like, do you know a few that you can actually mention? Yes. So our first one was in 2011. It was for a child suffering from Fanconi anemia, okay. which is a rare blood disorder. We took the stem cells from his baby sister. And there was a match six out of six from the HLA typing test that I told you about. Wow. Uh, the transplantation took place in Hussein Cancer Center in Jordan. And the baby, the, the child is fully healthy. He's now 22 years old. He's living a normal life. Wow, unbelievable. So okay. it is an application. It's not something that, you know, that is fiction. Mm-hmm. When parents tend to see these actual real cases that are based on BBC News report or some trusted report, they would say, okay, no, it is it is in action. Let me go for it. Yes, of course. Ahmed, thank you so much for joining us. Thank this you so was much. wonderful. The conversation just flowed. Um, I think we will definitely have you back uh, one day to tell us a bit more uh, about the recent findings, um, you know, uh, new applications to stem cells and success stories because everyone loves to hear those. 100%. With right. pleasure. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you.